Hey, this is Damon with Haggerty in our DIY series. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to mic your cylinder bores. Now before we get started, if you don't know how to use micrometers, go down to the description below and follow that link. All right, now when it comes to miking cylinder boards, you're looking at precision. Now, we can start off certainly by taking a pair of calipers and coming in here and measuring that ID. Now, you will get a number and it will be very accurate relative to the top of the ridge, but it will not be accurate to the actual cylinder bore because micrometers do not protrude down into the cylinder bore at all. That's where a pair of micrometers come in. In our case here, we need to measure the ID of the cylinder bore, but I'm certainly not going to come in here and eyeball the size relative to my micrometers. Micrometers measure an OD, so I need some way to transfer the ID measurement to an OD value so I can measure or use my micrometers. Now, one way to do that is to use a snap gauge or a telescoping gauge. And what they do is they come in to the bore, you set them at a position, and you tighten them down, tip them out, bring them back over to your micrometers, and then take the measurement. Now, as you can see, as I continue to do this, I have to measure this bore as an example. I want to measure one inch down, I want to measure at about the middle, and then I want to measure at the bottom. And then I also want to rotate that dimension by 90 degrees and take three more steps again. So in total, I have six measurements. Now, each time I do that, I have to come out, measure, put it back in, measure, and it tends to be a little more cumbersome and, and time consuming. Now, a better way to do that is to take a bore gauge. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it into the bore. Now, this end of the gauge is spring-loaded and it needs to be in contact. This end's solid and this end's spring-loaded. So it needs to contact our cylinder bore to measure it. So obviously I need to add some, a little bit longer anvil in this end. So let's see what our 2.4 gives us. So here's our 2.4. Now the trick is for it to actually compress but not go solid on us and that's not too bad I think I'm gonna go back though and let's use this with a couple shims we'll split the difference and that'll put us a little more centered within our gauge stroke okay so let's come into this bore. Yeah, that's a little nicer. And what I'm looking at is basically you have, the gauge only has so much stroke and you wanna be measuring in the center of that stroke. It's just the best for the overall precision. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zero this. And at this point I can really just pick any place wherever I wanna go. I'm just trying to get a number. Um, so let's set it about an inch down, just straight up and down in the bore. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth so I can get the smallest dimension. Okay, so now how you read this gauge is once you have it zeroed, anything that's on this side of zero is a larger number. So because you're not sitting perpendicular to the cylinder wall, so it's at an angle, it's going to be longer. When you go on this side, is your shortest number. So right now, like I said, I'm trying to zero this out, and I would say that is zero. And all I'm gonna do is gonna lock this face so it doesn't rotate anymore. So that is zero. Now, that's exactly all I know at this point. I know that my gauge is zero relative to that board dimension this way, but I have no idea what the size is yet, an actual number. That's where our micrometers come in, so now I'm going to come in here, and this does get a little tricky to hold, but I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust these micrometers, right, this way, to zero on this gauge over here. 
And yes, you need to know how many times, if you will. So at rest, it sits at about just a little over 20. And it's the first time it hits zero, opposed to the second time. That is important. So now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna tip this in. And as you can see, I am past zero one time. So I need to make my micrometers larger to bring it back. So there's zero. And I'll just verify that that is my best number. I guess I can come back just a little bit more. Yeah, so rocking it back and forth, just like I did in the cylinder bore, to find my smallest number, and basically bringing my dial bore gauge back to zero. So that's, that's pretty good right there. That is zero. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and read my micrometers to know what that exact size is just going in this direction. Okay, so this is our four to five mic. So it starts off at four inches, and I'm reading four inch, 350, and it's just, actually it's right on the money. It's three inch, four inch, 350. This is a comparator more than it really is a measuring device, okay? And I'm gonna measure in three spots, up and down, both directions. And anything, again, to the right of zero is a smaller number, or you subtract from the four inch 350. Any number to the left of zero, I add to four inch 350. In this case, it's about a half more. So it's, it's a half on this side of zero, so it's actually a half thou less than four inch 350. Here it's exactly zero. And there it's exact, it's a little bit less. So basically going in this direction, our cylinder actually is almost like a little bit of an hourglass shape based on how it wore. So it's a little bit um, larger here. It's smaller in the center and actually larger again at the bottom. Now, I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing and walk through that measurement. Okay, so now taking my numbers going this direction, what I have is my hole is actually a little bit large on the top and it tapers down. So Again, the wear is more concentrated at the top of the hole than it is at the bottom of the hole, which does make some sense because your rings are rubbing on the top portion of the cylinder opposed to the bottom based on where they're positioned with your pistons. So at this point, what I, can, what I know to tell the machine shop is I have some dimensions specific to this cylinder hole. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna measure all of them and have that number. Now. Next time on our DIY series, what I'm gonna show you is why the machine shop wants to know those numbers. So tune in to next time and we'll talk about that and what it really means as far as our engine block refurbishing. Now until then, get out in the shop and get your work done. See ya.